This Biennale is, happened during the pandemic, but it's not about the pandemic. However, it is about the causes that led us to the pandemic. Biennale preparations started in late 2018, uh, December 2018, and then uh, picked up pace obviously during 2019. And then when it came time to announce the participants sometime in February, we had to also immediately after that announce a postponement. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, uh, early February 2020, the area of Lombardy and uh, Northern Italy was facing a major crisis with the pandemic and we had no idea what it was about. And so the Biennale uh, wisely chose to postpone. Initially, we postponed until August and then we postponed the whole year. And uh, during that period, we obviously let all the architects who were invited just uh, huddle, stay where they are, uh, lock down, protect themselves. Uh, they were worried about their livelihood, their offices, their health. And then uh, once we came to know what the, what the uh, pandemic was about a little bit more, once the news about the uh, uh, vaccinations started, we realized that we could possibly open in May. And so we restarted and communicated with the participants. Obviously, there were some who could no longer participate because of certain changes in their lives. Uh, others had major difficulties with shipping, we helped. Uh, others had major difficulties sending their teams. We worked around that to be able to accommodate uh, the installation of the work through a team here in uh, Venice. But luckily, a week before the opening, uh, Europe opened its borders internally and we had an amazing turnout. We're the first big show to open after the pandemic in Venice and therefore it was a major curiosity for many people. People came to, first, they were thirsty for culture. They wanted to see Venice. They uh, thought the question was pertinent to the situation at the moment. How yeah. will we live together? And uh, people also came from Central Europe, from uh, everywhere around the world. And for, in that sense, I feel like we lucked out. We had a, uh, we, we took a risk. It, uh, we were, I don't know, we were courageous, we were crazy but it worked and uh, i feel like the public reception has been generally very positive the press has been very very uh, you know, we have a wide range of reviews obviously but they have been very receptive of the idea of coming back to the biennale and also of the theme being uh, itself a pertinent question to today whether some see it as ironic or prophetic i'm not sure but uh, it is right there The question is a very ancient question. Yeah. Every group of people who want to create a city, a community, a building, a house, uh, ask this question. Every, we ask it from the household all the way to the scale of the planet. And sometimes we wait for politicians to give us the answer. But clearly in the past few years, we've realized that these very big questions, climate change, uh, political polarization, economic inequalities, uh, mass mobility are not getting adequate responses from the politicians and that the political arena has created more divisions and uh, and dissolutions than solutions so i thought well architects ask this question all the time we ask it when we build a house we ask it when we build a city we ask it when we build institutions and every time we ask it we say well what if it could be better what if it could be different and so I said, why not turn to architects to ask that question? The Biennale has always been about convening, bringing 
architects from around the world together, not just to show their work, but to be together, to discuss, to debate, to, uh, to think about the future together. And this happened. I mean, I wish we had a different situation where we would be able to be much more open to people from all around the world, not just from Europe and North America, but the numbers are growing. And I'm hoping that with the pandemic, hopefully waning after the third wave, that uh, the rest of the world, meaning broader audience, will be able to come and attend. This finale is uh, very young in terms of participants, and this other reality is part of their way of thinking and seeing. And uh, we've used it in different ways. Once, in one, some one way is to communicate online, all of the projects and all, and that has been very helpful. Another way is in reducing our carbon footprint when we organize conferences, when we organize meetings, we didn't have to travel all the time to get things done. Uh, but we've also used it to make our experience more complete. So it's not that this this replaces that. Yeah. It complements it, it augments it, it, it amplifies it. And uh, the Biennale has been a very experiential Biennale, probably because of that, that people, when they travel this far to come and see something, they don't want to see plans, sections, and elevations. They can see those online anytime. Yes. So we've had to augment the experience in order to support, uh, in order to make this, this Biennale much more in, immersive. Uh, the Biennale is an institution that has been here from the 19th century. Yes. And uh, its role initially was to bring together European countries to showcase their art and Italy to be the convener host of all of that. And uh, with the years, it grew from being just art to including architecture, film, theater, cinema. And it is also very directly linked to the Ministry of Culture of Italy. So Italy sees it very much as uh, an outlet, an engine, a uh, platform for the international community in Italy to come together. And uh, obviously, it's not the mass tourism or the sightseeing tourism. It's a cultural tourism. And uh, in each of the Biennales, whether art or architecture or cinema, has a very different audience that comes to it. And so this particular Biennale of architecture, not just this round, but all of them, uh, tend to attract very young people. More than 50% are under 25, many of them students. But I also learned that more than 50% are also non-architects. So uh, there's a very interesting general interest in architecture uh, that you find here as well. Uh, we have a section in the Biennale called uh, Cohabitats, where we invited architects from different universities to participate in helping uh, present how their cities, how their communities have been living together for a long time. And uh, we have Rahul Mehrotra from Harvard University and from Mumbai. Uh, presenting a very interesting project about the corridor, the urban corridor that extends from Pakistan to India, and how despite the border differences and fights, uh, but uh, the kind of adversity, let's call it, uh, there's been a flow of exchange and life across this border, uh, maintaining the fact that urbanism, space, commerce, affinity, uh, always overwhelm politics. Uh, the sections are a way to first uh, get, uh, break the exhibition down into five scales. Yeah. Because the question how we look together is addressed from the scale of the human body and other beings to the scale of the planet. So that's one way I can answer this question. But the other is that it, scale is how architects think. You know, start with big, then come down to small or the other way around. And therefore, it represents a very architectural approach to organizing information and organizing the world and organizing space. This Biennale is, happened during the pandemic, but it's not about the pandemic. However, it is about the causes that led us to the pandemic. Climate change, mass migration, economic inequalities, political polarization. All these challenges, all these problems are still with us and they will still be with us once the pandemic leaves, hopefully soon. So we need to address those. 